So we need to restring this bad boy. I always suggest using Alexa strings or another coated string because they'll last longer and they'll maintain the tone. It'll be really interesting to see how much better this sounds once I've restrung it. Because these ones, these ones have been on forever. I always make a point of wiping them down after I've played though. And the only damage to the string you can see is where they're fraying from the pick attacks and, and stuff. The, they last a long time, Alexis. They're great if you don't want to change your strings very often. Let's restring this. A lot of people when they're starting out think it's, it's difficult to restring a guitar. They will take it to the shop and pay 20 bucks and get the guys to do it there. But I tell these students, it's really not hard to restring a guitar. It's fiddly. You gotta do it a few times before you get the hang of it. But it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm gonna start off by loosening the strings a bunch. You can do them one at a time. I'm just gonna take them all off today. Then I'm just gonna cut the strings that I'm taking off, making sure to keep it away from your eyes. I once had a student who cut a string while it had too much tension on it, snapped up. His, it was it was so close to his eye. Oh my gosh, that could have been that could have been a really bad situation. That's that's what you want to not happen. You don't want it to flick up like that. Which is why you want to keep your eyes out of the way and loosen them first. Don't don't just cut them. These pins are what hold the strings in place. I'm gonna start with the high E. When you're putting it into the guitar, keep it so the hole in the end of the string is going this way. That way, when you put this pin in, it's got the biggest part of the ball end to catch and hold it in there. And that groove in the pin is gonna line up with where the string is, it's gonna push it in. I'm not gonna worry about it too much at this stage because once there's tension on it, it will hold itself in place a lot better. I always like to start from the back when I'm restringing an acoustic guitar. So I'm going to pull it through, give myself a couple of fingers of slack. And then you're just going to wind, holding it down so it doesn't switch back over the top. Let's try the other strings. In from behind, a couple of fingers of slack, and pull it tight round, make sure I have a finger to hold the string down, and wind it up. Making sure that when we're winding it, the strings always stay on the inside of the headstock. Now we've got to tune it up, stretch the strings. To stretch them, we want to give them a gentle tug. We do this until we can stretch them and not have it go out of tune. So these strings feel a lot fresher <laughs> than they did before, but I don't think they sound that much different. Let's do, let's do an A-B comparison. Here is the old sounding strings. Here's the new ones. I'm not getting a noticeable difference. That's why I love coated strings. They're a little more expensive, but I think they're the best choice if you don't play a whole heap. The strings will last longer, they'll sound consistent, but if you wanna get used to changing strings, cause it's not hard, but it's fiddly. What I suggest you do before you commit to a set of coated strings, which will last you for quite a long time, buy a few sets of really cheap strings and then change them every two weeks. <laughs> for four to six weeks. Once you've gotten used to doing that, then 
put the coated strings on. Because the problem with changing the strings is it's not hard, it's fiddly, but if you don't do it a few times, you're not gonna get used to it. And you want to get used to it within a short period of time so you, you build a bit of that muscle memory and get the hang of it. This is a cheap $200 acoustic guitar. Which I thought would be interesting to compare to my $1,600 acoustic guitar that I bought 10 years ago. Is it worth getting a $1,600 acoustic guitar? I mean, it looks dope, but, but is it worth it sound and playability wise? Let's... Let's find out. Here is cheap $200 acoustic. I'll play a similar thing on it. We can compare it to my $1,600 guitar. What do you reckon? Does it sound different? It definitely feels different, and I can hear a difference in the sound, but keep in mind, the other guitar costs $1,400 more. So you have to ask yourself, are you hearing a $1,400 difference in sound? And then in terms of playability, do you have a $1,400 difference in playability? This doesn't have a solid top, which is something that you ideally want in an acoustic guitar. And the finishing on it is nowhere near as tidy as the finishing on my guitar. But for $200, it's not a bad instrument. The quality of the components is obviously not the same. The machine heads feel a little loose when tuning. But the intonation on it isn't bad. I am wondering if we could do a slight neck adjustment. Get the truss rod in there. Give it a turn to the right. This is gonna make the neck a little flatter, which will hopefully improve playability at the neck because the action on the strings is a little higher than it was on mine. I'm gonna keep tightening the truss rod until just before I get fret bars. You have to be careful when doing a truss rod because you don't want to damage your guitar by turning it too far. But if you're just doing small turns at a time, you're unlikely to do that. Although if you are unsure, get someone who knows what they're doing to adjust the truss rod. Now we're getting a little bit of fret buzz. So I need to go back until we get rid of that fret buzz. So this is where paying less for a guitar does become not a problem, but I can only get this neck so flat without there being fret buzz. The action on this guitar right now at the 12th fret, if we measure it, is one, two, three, is about 3.5 millimeters. If we compare that to the action of my guitar on the 12th fret, which is about 2.5 millimeters. So the action on my guitar up the fretboard is a lot lower, which makes it easier to play the whole way up and especially down the bottom with open chords. And I also don't have any fret buzzing issues. That's because on a more expensive guitar, more care is taken with the fret leveling and the straightness of the neck and all of that kind of stuff. 
that's one of the shortcomings with a cheaper guitar like this is if I hit the string hard, there's still a bit of fret buzz on that first fret. So a lot of the time what you're paying more for is better build quality, which sure is reflected in the finishing and that kind of thing, but often is more to do with how much care is taken in terms of putting together the fretboard and, and stuff and how flat the frets are. Because I can't get the strings on this guitar, I can't get the action any lower, which would make it more playable. It, uh, by the way, it's not unplayable. It's, like, it's not bad. It's a good guitar for $200. But I can't get it any more playable unless you know, you took it to a luthier or something who'd have to deal with leveling the frets and all of that kind of stuff. And at that point, you may as well just have bought a more expensive guitar to begin with. It's also nowhere near as nice a playing experience, but this guitar costs far less money than this guitar. So what do you think? Is this guitar worth an extra $1,400? If you're starting out, probably not. And to be honest, a $200 guitar is a great starting point for most people. That's the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you've got the notifications turned on so you don't miss any content in the future. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.